On to our final speaker, um, Alexander Samaly. Uh, Alex was born in Frankfurt am Main in Germany. He studied philosophy, Jewish studies, Greek and Roman history at Frankfurt University. Thereafter, he studied Jewish studies at Oxford University before settling in Manchester. Alex is currently the Professor of Jewish Thought in the Department of Religions and Theology, Manchester University. Previously, he was a member of the Middle Eastern Studies Department. Again, this is Alex's second time as a Muslim Jewish Forum panelist on Zoom. So like Sophia, he must have been good the first time or we wouldn't ask him back. So um, just to conclude, Alex came to live in the UK 39 years ago. He's Jewish and his native language is German. Over to you, Alex. So, thank you very much, Heather. Um, okay, I'll, uh, I'll take it almost in a chronological order. I was a, a pupil of um, about eight or nine, I think, in Germany. In a, in a place called Fulda, which is now in the center of the United Germany um, and was at the uh, eastern border of, the, of West Germany at the time. Um, and about that point, we started to learn English as the first and often the only foreign language being taught, but it started that early. And <clears throat> we had a wonderful um, teacher as a first teacher of English. Um, he was young, he was handsome, he was uh, dark-haired, energetic, uh, he was uh, kind, um, and he started us off in English when we were, I mean, this is, this is memory, right? His memory that is a long time ago. I have no idea whether this is really reliable and I have no way to check it, but that's how I remember it. So he was great. Um, and then he abandoned us after about half a year um, to do something incredibly cool, namely to take his family in a camper van um, down the coast of Chile or something like that to the southern tip of, uh, of South America. So he has been a mythical figure in my life ever since. Um, his disappearance just as important as his English teaching, but his English teaching was really, really uh, good as far as I now can tell. One of the things he, apart from the fact that we all loved him and that therefore we all want to learn English um, and do well, um, he spent quite a bit of time, if I, if I recall correctly, teaching us the TH and the pronunciation of the TH. And if you, were, if you grew up in Germany in the 1960s, you could tell that almost all the earlier generations of Germans who did know any English at all had an absolutely atrocious um, accent. And one of the reasons was the TH didn't work and, um, because it sounded like an S, basically. So, he made sure that pre pretty much that whole class got that right. Uh, he spent the time that was necessary to do that. And he, he set us off to a good start. So um, I then came to England uh, a little bit later when I was 23 um, and have stayed here ever since. I came to study and I, I've stayed here for, my, uh, for, my, for the rest of my uh, uh, study and, and career. Um, my work takes place entirely in English and is entirely to do with words. Um, so when I, uh, when I work, um, language is my object, my medium, my, uh, the, the topic of my reflection in one way or another. Um, so my wife, who also uh, uh, is a, a native speaker of German, also had an academic uh, professional environment until her retirement. And when we came home from work, we wouldn't switch into German. We would stay in English because everything that mattered had happened in English. And the easiest way to talk about it was to stay in English. Um, and since, uh, and that also goes to some extent to, uh, for my colleagues, for example, there are, I mean, we're an international bunch, all uh, universities pretty much are. But the German colleagues that I have, I don't tend to switch into German with them just because we happen to be um, both German native speakers. There are some colleagues who talk to each other, some German colleagues who talk to each other in German. Um, and when I, when I join them, they switch into English. 
maybe it's me, but anyway, it's uh, so um, I think everybody has a slightly different relationship to that, and it depends who this is you're talking uh, uh, to. So, a postman and trades tradespeople uh, in the area where I live, they hear me say about two words, and then they say either, "Where are you from? You you South African?" If I'm lucky, and if I'm unlucky, they say, "Oh, you're from Germany, aren't you?" So, um, and that's after you know, that's after. <laughs> 40 years in the country. Um, colleagues are usually much more tactful. They will think that, but they won't say it. So anyway, after the, after the birth of our son, uh, we decided, uh, Sheva and I decided, we would make an effort to speak uh, German in the house to make sure that he has, you know, at least some basic competence in it and that he has a language he can talk to his, his grandparents in. Um, and we stopped that after a few years, but he asked us to revert back to this um, when he was in his teens. And so we often now still today talk to German uh, with him, um, even though he is an English native speaker, he's not a German native speaker. Um, and so the environment in which, in which I use German is now quite restricted. In my work, my academic writing and research, which as Heather mentioned, is Jewish studies, in particular Hebrew and Aramaic sources of antiquity and modern Jewish philosophy. Um, it takes place in an, in an international context which is dominated by English. Um, it is also conducted in many other languages, including German. But almost all my work, um, all my, almost all my articles and all my books are written in English. So if I'm invited these days to write or speak in German, I, which occasionally happens, it is noticeably more work for me. It is. It requires extra. It requires retranslation. Um, it, I'm sure I'm, I'm. I'm not starting to sound as a non-native speaker. I don't think in writing, but it is. It does mean that I need to translate technical stuff into German that I'm not really that used to. Um, but I tend to read the German scholarship uh, in. The original, even if it is translated, which isn't very common. Um, and uh, I read German novelists and poets and philosophers in, in German almost always, rather than in an English translation. Um, we were asked specifically to talk about dreaming. And I thought about this a little bit, and it's, it's actually quite tricky. It seems to me that in my dreams, language is often not recognizable. It's not actually articulated clearly enough to distinguish what language it is. It's like, you know somebody is speaking, you know what language they are using language and the language is familiar to you, but it's like telepathy. You understand, the meaning is transplanted in a different, it's not as if you have a sound echo and could then, or at least it's certainly not when I remember it after waking up. So what I remember after waking up is, is simply often not any one particular language. When I think I do remember it, it is probably more often English than it is German, but I'm not, I'm not sure. I really am not sure whether that's actually the language in which the dream took place. Um, and uh, I think if I dream of my mother, then I'm almost certain that what our conversation took place in German, but I'm not sure. I mean, even for that, I'm not entirely sure. We've already talked about, one of, one of the speakers has already talked about counting, and I wanted to say something about counting. Um, I sometimes discover myself quietly counting in German, um, and in particular between one and ten. And this is, I think, a phenomenon studied quite, quite uh, a lot by linguists, or at least quite early on. They may not find it that interesting anymore, but I think it, I, I saw some, uh, a certain amount of literature on that at some point. Um, and in my own case, it's sometimes because I need to concentrate on something, on something else at the same time. So it's like I'm, I'm, I'm leaving, I'm leaving my, my even deeper subconscious to do the counting, because I can rely on it in German when I can't rely quite as much on, on it in, in English. Or sometimes I need to concentrate on the counting for some other reason. Um, for example, counting a rhythm or something like that, and I listen to the music. Um, this is really all I wanted to say, except I want to say one, one more thing. It, 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 it seems to me that having lived in English for 40 years out of my 60 years is, well, that's not quite true, but it's almost true. Um, 
has shaped my personality in a certain way. I don't think I would have the attitude to life that I have had I continued to live in Germany. And nowadays, I bring that attitude back to Germany when I talk to people in Germany or in German. I am, I am that particular kind of personality rather than the slightly different personality that I would have been had I continued in Germany. Now, I don't know what any of this means, but I thought I'd, I'd let you know it. Thank you.